Okay. To speak. Visiting councillors. Oh, sorry, there are two other deputants. Yes, Terry Mills. Mr. Mills? Welcome to committee. Well, thank you. You have for, uh, five minutes for your deputation, after which uh, you'll be eligible for questions. questioning by members uh, of committee and visiting councillors. Okay, I appreciate that. Well, this feels very familiar, by the way. I was involved with the, uh, the uh, process uh, that has brought to production uh, what's before you now. Um, I'm a planner, and I've been a member of Contra. And I live in the neighborhood, and uh, I'm here to speak on this matter, having been involved with it from the beginning and prior to with the uh, Minto Blitz. Um, and, you know, the, the community is actually uh, very happy with what has gone on here as a process. Uh, it's been a good process, it's been great consultation. I think part of that has uh, been as well the uh, regard that. Uh, Joe and uh, James and the whole of city staff has put onto this project. And as well, uh, you know, credit goes to the uh, councillors, uh, Walker and Stintz and Clifford, for their uh, uh, guidance and support of uh, what's gone on. And I think that's very important. It was a good process. I mean, we went through the, uh, what I call the Minto debacle, where basically I think uh, they did a very incredible, what I would call embarrassment of the planning process in the city and as we know that was a very painful and contentious uh, process. Uh, interestingly enough, just so you understand, uh, where Fontra stood on that with the Minto project was actually looking at this TTC block and we say in this case, okay, rather than dealing with this small site on the east side of Young Street, we're looking at the whole of the TTC block and uh, the concern at the time was that if that sort of uh, blitzing of uh, the whole planning framework was to be applied to the TTC block, uh, you know, we'd really see uh, development in the city in a shambles. But it wasn't just that the process was good. You know, what we have here as well is a good result. And I believe very strongly that it is something that is recommendable in other, you know, planning uh, considerations throughout the city as they come up. Um, and that was certainly as well part of our interest was that we wanted to see planning, uh, you know, sort of uh, gain its respect. And actually, you know, when this all started was back in 2003 and what started the whole TTC block initiative in terms of firing the gun to start the process was actually the community coming forward with this discussion paper which went through the block and we looked at it from what would be an equitable solution for the neighborhood, for the city and for businesses and developers. And that, I think, was part of the success, that we came forward with an equitable uh, framework within which it could be discussed. I would, at the end, like to say there are a couple of points I want to address in uh, here, just two of them that I think are tweaks, and that's all that we need to look at straightening out. Um, you know, as I mentioned here, we, you know, I think everybody was, had good input and good regard good working sessions. Uh, that included the city, the community, the owners of the land, who in this case were a private developer, Coulter at the time, and uh, TTC and the city itself. And also the development industry, I think, has been supportive of this. I think the two I find of interest in this whole thing was we also put in our proposal that this should be, in the beginning, our discussion paper, I should say, that this should be a made in Toronto solution not something that ends up before the OMB. I found that interesting because in the very beginning there was sort of a, no one could believe that. But I think very quickly everybody began to realize that yes, Toronto can look after its own affairs and it's really a case of getting together and working out a desirable solution that is equitable. I think the city liked it so much they actually put on a conference about nine months later and the title of it was Made in Toronto. It was a planning uh, conference. Uh, we were glad to give them the title. Um, I think sustainability is very much part of this whole proposal. I think we've shown how to go forward on a piece of land that for the last 50 years 
has been a thorn in the side of planning and development in the city is what do you do with this ungainly large block, which is a, in effect really a brownfield for the most part, and yet it's very important with its transit uh, connections and everything else. So all in all, what I think is before you is what I would call a best results solution. I think we've really currentized you know, what this land can do. In fact, we're seeing uh, already interests uh, for getting on with the next stage, which is to actually see implementation occur on parts of it. And we've put together a framework that will go on well into the future. Uh, and in the end, it shows what can happen there. And with that, it will bring, a, a, I think, quite a healing and uh, to the, the young Eglinton area as to what it really is. You know, right now, when you look at that block, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit of a confusion. Uh, and yet, there's a great potential there, and we've shown how to, uh, that can be handled. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mills. Can I just identify these two things that I brought up in the beginning very quickly? Um, yeah, and this extension, all those in favor, opposed, that's carried. Okay. Pardon? Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, these, these were covered in the letter that came through. And what we were looking there in that letter is you'll see that... Uh, there's one item here on page 37 uh, under Southwest Quadrant, that's six uh, subparagraph A. New development shall not preclude. Wait a second, wait a second. Yeah. Page 37. Page 37, about mid page, slightly up. It's Southwest Quadrant, so it's item six, subsection A. Develop, new development shall not preclude the implementation of a new public road, and that's the road that uh, James was showing you through the middle of the block that's need for all the servicing, etc. And it is a very large block. And we would like to see that uh, actually, I think, uh, clarified so there's no uh, misinterpretations or that's a double negative, actually, what? not preclude. Is we want to see the, that new development shall include the implementation. It's, it's a bit ambig ambiguous, uh, it's almost a double negative of saying not preclude. And uh, the other tweak? The other one is easy to find is uh, item B immediately below. Uh, and, uh, and that should change to say rather than may, it should say shall. And again, this was one item that's been lingering from the very beginning when we were saying that since it's city land, you are in a position to sell what uh, is appropriate and reasonable to sell. Okay. And we're looking there that using volumetric title or strata so that uh, the height of the buildings doesn't end up being a, a Minto pop-up where for a million dollars you can pop on an extra 40 stories above the uh, planning framework. Okay, thank you. Uh, questions of uh, Mr. Mills by visiting councillors? None? By members of committee? None? Okay, thank you very thank much. You. Appreciate it.